our first speaker today. We're going to play with the presentation. So our first speaker today is an uh, expert on waterway environment. We have a website called Irish Waterway History. It's an absolute fountain of knowledge about water environment, canals, transport, history, industry, and heritage. We ask him to be the expert. And his name is Brian Golly. And we welcome up here now. Okay. In the last few years, any time I've addressed a group, I've felt it necessary to point out that I am not in any way related to the local used to run the Bank of Ireland. <laughs> uh, the only thing we have in common is that both of us are having to get by on less than two million a year at the moment. But I'm better off because I have more practice at that than he has. Anyway, um, I'm uh, myself engaged in research into the um, the transport on the River Shannon in the 1830s, um, the importance of steam uh, transport in, in Ireland at that era. Uh, I'm, it's sort of a work in progress, so I, I, give, I have some conclusions that are more firm than others, if you might say. If, 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 I were, if, I, if instead of talking and I were writing to you, I'd give you footnotes all over the place. Uh, but we'll skip, all, we'll skip all of that today. Um, being confined to 15 minutes to talk about happily enables me to focus uh, very narrowly on, on a, couple of, a couple of topics. I suppose my main theme is uh, the Shannon uh, in work, the Shannon as an economic resource. The Shannon is a place that people made their living from and on and with and to. Uh, as I say, I'm going to focus on mostly, though not entirely, uh, on, on the first part of the 19th century, but you will see some of the themes will carry on uh, to, 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 to later years. Um, uh, that's, my, that's a picture of my website, isn't it nice? Uh, that's our boat there, by the way. Um, uh, that's uh, over 100 years old. Uh, it used to work on the river shore, but it's now on the Shannon, so it's moved from the south coast of Tipperary to the, to the west coast of Tipperary. And uh, that's just to show that I have permission from the Orton Survey to show extracts from their maps. Um, so I'm going to talk briefly on, on, on three themes, if you like, or three sub-themes. Uh, the Shannon is a source of resources, uh, the things you can get from the Shannon itself. Uh, the Shannon for transport and the Shannon for, for power or energy. Um, just briefly first, though, uh, the Shannon as a river for transport, navigation, and so on had severe problems and difficulties. Um, the problems with the Shannon Estuary, for example, uh, Limerick is 60 miles up a long and winding estuary. Uh, the problems were written about at length by this man here. Anyone recognise him? What else would you would really? Uh, you, you might have heard of him. His name is Thomas Steele. No? He was a strong supporter of Daniel O'Connell. He was a Protestant landlord from County Clare who spent all his money uh, to keep peace. Uh, he was also renowned in his time as probably one of the greatest urinators of his era. Oh. As you know, a urinator is a diver or underwater worker. He dived on the wreck of the Tudor worship with the Mary Rose. He dived, uh, di dived on the intrinsic off the coast of Clare. He spent New Year's Eve one year um, in a diving bell on the foundations of the pier in Dunleary, which was being built at the time. Um, and he also, at his own expense, did a survey of the Shannon Estuary, including having himself rowed up and down the Shannon, and getting over the side of the boat, hanging in the water to try to feel with his toes exactly how far down the rocks were. And he paid money to all the pilots of the port to help him. To, 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 and he drew up a map and he showed how difficult it was to get uh, a sailing ship from one end of the Shannon Estuary to the other. If the wind was right going around one bend, it was wrong on the other. There, was a, there were currents in the narrow places, they would sweep you down into rocks, and there were no markings on the rocks. So it was altogether a very, very difficult port to get to. And if you survived all of that, then you had a peril here at Puna where the pirates hung out. People in Pune, if your ship was becalmed, as it very often was, coming around that narrow bend there, they'd row out to nip all the cargo from your ship. So altogether, altogether, I'm it was a very, very difficult passage. Uh, if you go up to Limerick itself then, this is from the Orton Survey map of around 1840, and you can see how intricate the channels of water are through, through and around the city. Um, the city itself, along the, along the quays there, uh, they, that all dried out at, at low tide, even after the last of the quays were built. And what they called shark vessels, which was anything with a V bottom, which included steamships, um, would either fall over or would have to remain anchor, uh, remain at anchor out, out in the middle. Um, uh, later, that was that was uh, that, that problem was overcome by the, the building of the floating dock here, uh, shown there in the 1900 Open Survey. Now it's not coming out very well. But, uh, but never mind. 
Uh, this is the, here you can see the custom house key uh, built by the well-known Italian nutter, the Viso Ducart, who was also responsible for the drone navigation, where he decided to build a canal without locks. You'd have little, little trolleys that would move boats between different sections. It didn't work. Uh, the custom house worked rather better. But you can see even here, that ship is, uh, is, is probably a ground on the mud. The, the water level is down so far. But you can also see the number of small vessels moving around carrying goods uh, of one sort. And they face down the dreaded passage up the, up the, uh, up the, Abbey, up the Abbey River. Um, sorry, uh, this canal here, what we now call the Park Canal, is the bottom part of the Limerick Navigation. That was built to bypass uh, Pat Lysen's area down here, where there's all these rocks and stones and that's weirds and other, other, other navigation difficulties. Even digging that was very difficult because a lot of it was dug through a bog. So that cut off all of that and brought you up here, and then you stayed for, in, in the river for a mile up as far as Plassey on the old navigation. Above that, you have the dreaded Falls of Dunas. In Victorian times, ladies used to come and sketch this lot after they'd done the lakes of Killarney. It was that famous. Uh, these are a couple of, of, uh, of drawings from, the, from that era. This is, this is the Falls of Dunas, uh, or at the Castle Connell End, during the floods of 2009, when we probably had back the sort of pre art and crush of water levels. That question of water levels is itself a very interesting one. This is the lock, um, the park lock, halfway up the park canal. And there's the water gauge there. And uh, if, if we close up on that, you, you see that it's showing about 2.2 meters of depth of, of, of water. Here's the same water gauge during the floods of 2009. 4.6 meters. Now, uh, before, so all the water that now goes through Arctic Prussia and more, <laughs> Uh, would, would have been coming down this way in the old days, or potentially doing so. That head of water, of course, had, had itself uh, uh, an advantage. Moving on to resources, I will, I will mention briefly uh, the, 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 the Lax Weir, the major salmon weir uh, of great antiquity and a uh, great source of wealth in, in ancient times. It's in control of it and fights over it uh, prominent in, in, in Limerick's history. Uh, the Thoman Weir of, 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 of the later era. Um, a cot there, uh, a descendant of the, of, of the rock homes used for snap net fishing uh, in bygone days. Um, a sand cot um, coming uh, in, in the park canal there, probably having come down from Plassey with a load of sand. Uh, the great English uh, waterways and steam historian L.T.C. wrote, met one of these in the late 1940s, and wrote about it in his book Green and Silver. Uh, cot there. I mean, in the background, this is the distinctive bow of Grand Canal Company motor barge. Uh, so you've got the leaks there of what was at the time the modern, if you like, that fleet of barges was built in the 1920s. Uh, and the, the, the rather older technology of the, the, the heavily laden sand cot here. And that's the reproduction sand cot that was built some years ago. Um, eels, another, another major. If you look at any of the old Northern survey maps, and incidentally, you can do so free of charge on, on, on the OSI website. Uh, you can see the, the, uh, the e there are eel weirs all, all, all over the shop. Here's some more up near Castle Connell. And uh, this place, this in fact was the headquarters of, of Anthony Mackey's eel fishery business, which was taken over as part of the Castle Connell Soviet. It was slightly less famous than the Limerick Soviet, but there was one, it didn't last long. Uh, so that's just, just a quick view of the sorts of resources of people getting out of the river. To say nothing of water for washing, water for drinking, uh, water for carrying away sewage, water for carrying away effluent from industrial premises, and all the other uh, things you, 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 you can probably think of. Just looking at the transport angle, um, here, here, is, here is Limerick in relation to Loch Derg and, and Northern End of River Shannon. Uh, and the old course of the river uh, over the falls of Dunas, quite unnavigable, except to uh, very daring people in canoes or in the old days of cots taking visitors down. And it, it was, uh, so to get boats from Limerick to the Shannon, to the Doctor or vice versa, the Limerick navigation was in five sections. We have Park Canal, which is seen already down at the bottom here, one Irish mile long. An Irish mile is bigger than a British mile, of course. And of course, there's a milestone at the top there to show you that. It's another milestone up here. It's a mile then in the river as far as Plassey. Then you follow the old Plassey Area Canal, Area Canal, you can just about to see it there. And that rejoins the Shannon just south of O'Brien's Bridge. We were then back in the river, up through O'Brien's Bridge, where the pass passage was extremely difficult because of the current of the bridge, up to just below the canal, when there was another short section of canal leading up through the canal itself. Most of that old navigation is still there. It's still accessible. The only bit that's really gone is about there, uh, where, where Arkham Crush has taken over. All of that historic navigation built in the late 18th century 
uh, is still there, still accessible, and it's an invaluable trove of, 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 of as well as providing walking routes along the uh, along the river. Uh, when the Limerick navigation was built, a lot of the, lot of the traffic was very small boats, uh, with maximum size may, carrying maybe 10, 15 tons, and even that only only in the winter time when the water levels were up. A lot of them were this sort of fairly crude uh, boat. This, this one is actually from 1842, the one Stokes on up there. But it, it appears to conform to the sort of description, relatively small amounts of cargo being carried uh, on relatively crude boats with falling masts, as they call them. In other words, the masts can be taken down and going on the bridges. Uh, here's a close up, and I do come to the performance. Okay, we're getting there. Um, this is a turf boat being propelled by a combination of oars and poles, which was, which was characteristic. This man, Charles Y. Williams, saw the potential of applying steam power to this navigation. Uh, the fertile lands of the Shannon Estuary, this is the embankment at Latoon. This is the River Rhine, which several German officers are about to cross. This one doesn't have an H in it, so it's the R-I-N-E at the tomb. And banked land meant you could get boats up the river, but also it reclaimed the rich uh, alluvial floodplains known as the Caucasus. So good for growing food. So steamer service going from Kilrush here, uh, all the way up to Shannon Estuary. There's an ad for the two rival firms of steamers in 1840. Uh, all the way up here to Limerick. This is the familiar barcode engraving, in which the important part is that you can't see it very well here, but there, there, there's smoke coming out of the two vessels there and there. So we know that those are steamers coming through. Barclays didn't give sufficient uh, attention to the important bits of these drawings, like the steamers themselves. Um, this, of course, the, this extremely difficult bit of navigation on which a current of 10.6 knots uh, was recorded recently. Uh, the link between the, the, um, the estuary and the canal um, in order, and that was spanned by the old Valls Bridge, which had three arches in it. <coughs> a friend, Mr. Williams, who we saw earlier, it's Steve Mann, uh, knocked that bridge down and built this one instead. And it's the only place that has his, in Ireland or in the world that has his name on it, as far as I know. It's the only memorial to This is some traffic going down uh, that stretch of river, uh, presumably with the tide, just as we would do today, except the meeting of lies it to guide us, which it didn't have back then. Williams also rebuilt the bridge at the <coughs> Bridge, knocked two arches into one here and built a towing path. Along. So this is the steamer at, uh, at Killaloo, uh, ready to go off up the lake. Uh, here from the Admiralty Surveyors in 1837 is a drawing of the steamer going up the lake, towing two barges of produce from down this region on its way. Uh, this another steamer, this time with sails up as well. And uh, so steam was applied on the Shannon Estuary, on Loch Dur, uh, and across the Irish Sea. And the, the upper end of the Shannon, in other words, in those days, the place where the traffic went to was Liverpool. And ultimately, then for passengers onto London. Um, that's Liverpool. Um, that's Daniel O'Connell, who supported all of this. So, did this man here, uh, he was a member of Parliament for Cambridge, uh, but he'd previously been the MP for Limerick, his name is Tom Spring Rice. Uh, and this is one of the things that they built as a result of, of the investment brought about by, by Spring Rice, uh, which in, in, in turn reflected the importance of the steam navigation they built the Black Bridge of Classic. Uh, I'm just going to uh, go very quickly to show that uh, the, num the number of mills. Uh, that there were in bygone days along using water power at Classy Mill, that's the remains of the lock in Classy. Um, a, a, a less well known one is up here, the bleach mill at Dunas, just above, uh, uh, just above Castle Common. Uh, there was another bleach mill slightly further down there. Uh, most of Limerick's energy in the 19th century and the 18th came from the rush from Palmetry Bog there, conveyed by turf boats up here to Limerick, the remains of a turf boat. So that's the sort of turf boat they used. Here's one being rebuilt recently. It was launched last week. The replica turf boat launched last week in Quering on the Um Turf also came downstream from here. Uh, McNabb's bog just uh, between Castle Common and the Browns Bridge. McNabb built a little canal into the bog himself, get the turf out down the old Plansierian Canal into Limerick. Uh, the record said that there was a key there, and here's the key hole that was dug out recently. And uh, the turf was going to power the first steam engine in Limerick, which was used at the Limerick Distillery here, which was owned by Mr. Stein and Brown. So the turf came in here at Brown's Key. And here is a drawing in the, or a painting in the Limerick Gallery showing a loaded turf boat coming in and an empty turf boat going out just there at uh, Brown's Key. Um, sorry, this is just uh, modern applications of water power uh, in Arctic Russia, but I just want to show the, the extent to which. Uh, Energy has characterized the Shannon in the past and now, both on the Estuary and Buck River. Um, and finally, I just want to take you very briefly from the harbor in Limerick uh, upstream, uh, that's before they knocked down the warehouse, 
uh, remember you're looking here at stuff that started work on which started work in, 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 in the latter half of, of the 1700s. Uh, borrowed from the Lee foundry in Limerick, Harrison Lee, uh, old crane. That, uh, anybody know what that is? That's where the barges, that's where the barges turned. Uh, they were too wide for the canal at that point, so stick the nose in there and, and put the and, and, and power around. One of the milestones I mentioned uh, at Corbley there, the Corbley Weir, which was built to hold up the water level across the head of the Park Canal in the 1840s. Uh, one of the distinctive bridges of the Limerick navigation. High wall on this side, the horse towing the boat won't fall off into the back. The horse, remember, is straining uh, against the current, towing a 50 ton load of barge. And a low wall on this side means that the tow rope can go out over the wall to the river. That's my guess anyway, I haven't seen it written down anywhere. And um, uh, the Black Bridge, uh, that's it in normal times, that's it in the floods of 2009 that damaged it so severely that it has been closed since. Um, absolutely gorgeous ironwork on that. Uh, the pens on that wall are marking grooves by the tow ropes uh, because the horse was coming across the bridge that way, but the boat was being swept down by the current this way, and the strain on the on the ropes was such that uh, it wore grooves in the in the in the parallel. You won't see; they're impossible to see, but you will feel them with your hand. Uh, grooves on the on the uprights of the bridge are fairly common. Grooves on the parapet of the bridge are extremely rare. They're on the back bridge as well. Grooves. That's the one. On the steel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, uh, uh, sorry, Castlecombe, where uh, O'Brien's Bridge, Killaloo, that's me. Uh, I just want to make a point that um, the, the old Limerick navigation uh, is what justified the Black Bridge and everything else as well. Uh, it's an invaluable historical uh, and heritage artifact, and it's basically ignored. Uh, the fact that the Black Bridge, the closure of the Black Bridge has meant that uh, one route on the old Limerick navigation, uh, uh, the, uh, 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 one way of getting across the river past has been closed, and so would so people can use the University Bridge. But that bridge was the route to Liverpool and London. That was an extremely important part. It, 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 it was built to replace the ferry previously used for getting boats and, and, and horses across. Uh, so it's an extremely valuable artifact, and if we saw it in that light, we might give more attention to getting it reopened. Thank you very much. Sorry.